one, I mine in the set number 75354, Coruscant Guard Gunship from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 1,083 pieces, 5 minifigures, and retails for $139.99 in the US. This set was sent to me for review by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here's the Coruscant Guard Gunship, and I believe this is the first time we've ever gotten a Republic Gunship with this color scheme, and I'm kinda in two minds about that. On the one hand, the other color scheme, like the white and green one, is way more iconic, so that probably would've been a better option and would've sold better because it is more iconic, and it has been a few years since we last got it in LEGO. That being said though, we have gotten in LEGO before, though minifigure scale it has been like 10 years. However, this is a color scheme that we've never gotten in LEGO before, so this makes us feel entirely new. So I do definitely like this set in that sense. So honestly, I'm not sure which of the two I would have preferred. I will say that the dark red all over this build looks amazing. One of my biggest criticisms of the LEGO Star Wars sets a lot of the times is that they're all very plain, like a lot of them are just white or gray. And the base gunship does have a somewhat unique color scheme, but even still, it is very white. So this being almost entirely dark red definitely helps it stand out in a LEGO Star Wars collection. But yeah, I just want to take a moment to take in this entire thing. Now let's move up a little bit closer and look at each individual bit of this build. Starting in the very front right here, you can see we have a little bit of white and two of these like giant cannons coming out. These are unlike these large ball connections, so you can see they can be rotated and moved around a bit, so you can have the gunship aim and fire at different things. Moving up a little bit, we get to the cockpit area, and you can see there's two seats right here, each with their own little windscreen, and of course, each of these can individually be opened up. Inside of each one, there's room to fit a single figure, and there's also a printed console piece in front. That console piece is nothing new or special, it's just a generic one that comes in tons of sets, but still good to get here, and obviously it fits with the color scheme of this set. So here's how the gunship looks with clone troopers actually piloting it. Now, the minifigures can't really hold their weapons like while they're actually in the seat, you can see that it doesn't really close completely. However, if you want to store the weapons while the minifigures are in here, there is still extra room in these areas, so you can just sort of slot these weapons in on the side and still closed up around them. So you can see now I've got that blaster sitting right there, but it's still fully closed up. It's not the most elegant of solutions, obviously like clip somewhere is better, but this definitely works, which makes me happy to see. This entire like upper front section, by the way, has a little bit of give to it, you can see it moves ever so slightly. That's not gonna like fall apart on you or anything, it is still pretty firm, but there's just a little bit of motion there that I don't think is supposed to be there. So I guess that's just something to be aware of, at least personally to me, it's not that big of a deal but I felt it was something I should still point out. Moving down now, here we come to our first bit of paneling. You can see this uses a giant stickered piece with the Republic symbol on it, and this can be sort of moved out to open it up. We'll take a look at the interior in a moment when we get everything opened up, but you can see that the other side's exactly the same. Then next to that, of course, we come to the rest of the paneling, the back paneling, and this is much bigger because it's just one large panel right here. I'm kind of mixed on the design of this. I really like these white stripes they have going here. That's a really unique shape that LEGO doesn't do all too often, but the part I don't like are these trans black like sort of window pieces, and it's not even that I think they look bad. I just feel like the connection system is not the best. You see, some of them connect on firm, like this one right here, but a lot of them connect on with only one stud, so they're very easy to accidentally lodge out of place, like this. And then they can also accidentally slide up and down a little. So as such, I mean, it's fine for display if you put this on a shelf and never touch it, but this is a 9 plus set, I mean, it's meant for kids to play with, so I kind of wish those were locked on a little bit better, because even when moving it around for my review, I keep accidentally nudging these and having to fix them. Now, if you wanted to change that to make these more sturdy, you probably could with your own parts, but yeah, it's just something to be aware of in the base form of the ship, like I didn't even touch this one for an example. It was just like that, I must have nudged it earlier. You could also just leave them off entirely, like I think the vehicle would still look good without them. But yeah, I just kind of wish they had been integrated better. Anyway, now let's take a look at how this paneling opens up and this is super smooth. You just pull it out into the back and that gives you access into the full interior. Same thing, of course, on the other side. And then finally, the last thing to look at down here is the hatch around the back. Now, of course, this is one of the major parts, like, in-universe that the ship opens up to allow troopers to get in and out. And you can see, once again, right here, we have a stickered piece with the Republic logo on it. And it's very simple to open this up. There's just two pinches right here, you pull them down. And this is a very easy place for troops to walk in and out. But now, with everything opened up, here's a full look at the interior. And honestly, there's not too much to show, because this is just a troop carrier. It just has a ton of room to pose figures. And I mean, yeah, there definitely is a lot of room back here, even just in this back section, you could fit quite a few. Now, unfortunately, it's not all studs, like parts of these are very flat, as you can see. I think I would have preferred if it was all studs, just so you had more options to pose figures, but again, that's a very easy change to make if you have parts from your own collection. And of course, the front paneling does not come up as high, so you can't see in there as well, but once again, it's just more room to store troops. And that's literally all there is to the interior. I would have liked maybe some weapon racks or something to store the minifigures' accessories, because you have a few of these pillars, like, holding the ship together, but they have nothing on them. So it's not a huge deal. I mean, it is meant to be a troop carrier first and foremost, and it does do a good job of carrying troops. And that's also a very easy customization to make again with your own parts, but I would have liked if that was there by default. But now moving up the gunship, there's something right here that I actually like. This is just a little handle to hold onto it to make it easy to like carry and swoosh around. And that's actually not static, there's a bit of looseness to it so you can say I could shake it back and forth. And it's very fun just to fly it around like this, very stable, like nothing's falling apart. Definitely makes the build a lot more fun for play. Then we come to the very top, and I think these giant like cannons up here look alright. They feel maybe a little bit plain, a little bit blocky. I think I maybe would have preferred if the dark red came a little bit further up, maybe put some stickers 
stickers on these white parts, but all things considered, it is fine. I will say, this set uses very few stickers, a lot less than I've come to expect from LEGO Star Wars ships. Like, there is a few, but really not too many. And then we come down to the wings, and I think these are pretty sleek. I feel like there's the right amount of studs here, there's not too many studs, but it's also not too flat. We've got a little stud shooter cannon on the end, which of course you press down on and they shoot out. That's not able to be turned or anything, unfortunately, I'm not sure if any universe that can do that, but definitely would've been cool if they had that here. And then of course, the wing itself is basically static in place. There is a little bit of give there, as you can see, I can wiggle it ever so slightly. Kind of similar to what happens with the front cockpit area, though maybe even a little bit more. But all things considered, it is still pretty stable. And then finally, I guess to end things off with the build of the set, here's a look at the back of the vehicle. And this part right here is once again on a mini ball joint. And there is these two doors on the sides, which can be opened up. And they're empty by default, so that's another place where you can store minifigure accessories if you want, which I do appreciate. But that still doesn't change the fact that I would have liked some clips maybe inside the vehicle. But I think that's about everything for the build of the Coruscant Guard Republic gunship. I'll talk about it more at the end of this video and give you my overall thoughts on whether or not I recommend it. But first, let's take a look at the five minifigures that come in this set. So here are the first three minifigures in the set, the three clone troopers. We have two Coruscant Guards, and we also have Commander Fox. Starting with the Coruscant Guards, they're of course exactly identical, and they're just pretty much the standard LEGO Phase 2 clone trooper design, though of course with red markings on them instead of the other colors that we've gotten in the past. I will say though, I mean I like them, they look good. They're pretty much everything I could have wanted from these figures. Now of course these are the clone troopers that do have the holes in the helmets, which I know some people don't like. Personally, I don't mind them so much, but I know for some fans that is an issue. However, it of course allows you to put accessories onto the figures like we have in Commander Fox right here, so I think that trade-off is more than worth it. But I don't have a ton to say on them because I mean it is just a standard clone trooper design, but I'm pretty happy with them. The red really pops against the white, it's probably one of my favorite color combinations we've gotten from these figures. And then of course they just have these standard clone trooper heads underneath. So yeah, not much else to say on them. I wish we got more than two because for $140 set, more than two would have been nice. Like ideally four or five, but even just one more to make that total of four on this set I think would have been perfect, but it's whatever. Hopefully they get re-released somewhere else at some point. And then we come to Commander Fox, who's a figure who I think has a really cool design, but they just absolutely ruined. The first thing I don't love about this figure is the printing quality. I feel like the white printing on top of the red is just not vibrant enough, like the red torso really bleeds through right there. So as such, it makes it this sort of like off-white pinkish color and that just doesn't really work in my opinion. Maybe as a standalone figure it looks alright, but especially standing next to these two figures with the actual like proper white Lego pieces, that white printing just doesn't feel like it was done right, so I really wish that was better and I feel like that hurts this figure a lot. But then the other part about this figure I don't like is actually the legs, and that's just because I feel like they really should have been dual molded with red at the top and white at the bottom. Because from the front they might look alright, but then you turn to the side and ew, that looks looks so ugly. That's such a harsh transition from the red plastic into the white plastic. Those hips being red does not look good at all. And I think there's two different ways that could have fixed this. The first, obviously, would be to dual mold it, like I just mentioned. But the other way to fix it would have been to do a cloth waist cape, which is something that LEGO used to do in the past, a little cloth piece that goes around the legs. And they're even doing it with LEGO Dreams this year. But no, they started printing the waist capes on the sides of the figures, which again, I don't mind if it was dual molded and even maybe had side leg printing. But the printed waist cape and no dual molding, this looks so ugly. So as cool as the rest the figure is, and as cool as the actual design of the character is, I feel like they just didn't capture it well here. He of course has a visor that attaches to his helmet, but that can be removed. And there's a full look at that helmet print. I will say that helmet is a very cool part to get, because it's the clone trooper helmet fully recolored, it's not just different printing. I don't know if we've ever gotten that before, or I guess we have, no. There's been some clone troopers that have used other colored helmets, but I don't believe we've ever gotten this piece in red before. So at least personally, I find that to be a very fun part to collect. Then if we remove the helmet, you can see it just has the same standard clone trooper face, and there's the back of his torso too, where you can see it's basically just in inverted from the other clone troopers, though of course, again, that white is not printed so well. So yeah, this is no fault of the designers, this is a fault of the printing. This had the potential to be a really cool minifigure and just fell short, in my opinion. I will say that I do like the accessories that he comes with, he comes with two of these smaller blasters, and that's a slightly more realistic gun design compared to the ones that the standard clone troopers use. Obviously still not super realistic, but it's about as close as you're gonna get in LEGO, and it's not the most common part in the world, so I'm very happy to see it here. So yeah, overall, I don't know, there was potential here, but I feel like it just falls short. These two are really good figures, but I just wish there was more of them in a set this big, and then this guy is a great design, but it's just ruined by other things. And then here are the next two figures, the final two figures in this set. We have Chancellor Palpatine and Padme Amidala. This Palpatine figure is actually really great, I love the design here. I don't know if you've ever gotten this figure outside of like the Clone Wars style design, but obviously this is the more realistic modern Lego approach. And the level of detail here is incredible, I love like how tiny the printing is on his torso. You've got like all these little loops that make up the fabric of his design. Amazing new face print for him too, he has like blonde eyebrows and a little smile. And you can see that that super detailed fabric continues around the back, including into the dress piece, and if we take the hairpiece off, we can see his alternate face, where he's significantly more angry. Great hairpiece too, I don't know if you've ever gotten that in blonde before, but if not, very cool recolor to get. So yeah, this is an amazing minifigure all around, I really like this one. And then Padme, I think, is pretty good. Her only torso piece is pretty good, it's a good representation of the outfit from the actual media. She does have unprinted legs here, but I think it's perfectly fine for a figure like this. And this hairpiece has always fit her pretty well. 
The only part I don't like about this figure is the face print, because a few years ago, the last time we got Padme, she had an exclusive face that was just for her, and it looked just like the actress, and that's just not the case anymore. This is just one of LEGO's just generic white female faces that they've been using for years at this point, and there's so many different characters that use this exact same face print, so it's just lame to see that Padme used to have an exclusive face, and now she's just another one to use this one individual face. I don't think it's the worst for her, like, I can still see her in it, but she used to have a better face, they just got rid of it here, and replaced it with this generic one, so that's definitely a letdown. There is an alternate face around the back where you can see she's just a little bit angry, but yeah, I don't have much else to say on that. Good outfit, so if you have the original figure, you could very easily swap out that face, but if you don't, like I don't, you're kind of just stuck with this, and that's a little bit lame. And so, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? If this set was like $40 cheaper, I would say wonderful, fantastic, must-have set, or maybe not must-have set, but like if you're a fan of Star Wars, this is a great set to pick up. But for $140, they are really stretching it here. I know obviously LEGO prices have increased and that's fine, stuff's gonna be more expensive nowadays, but even still, comparing it to other like price increase sets, it doesn't really feel like the value is here a ton. Like I think the best comparison is the ATTE from last year because it was another Clone Wars set that was the same exact price, and it was also a similar piece count, but yeah, I really like that set and it had significantly more minifigures. So I think that's the biggest thing here is the minifigure selection is a letdown. Not that the figures are bad per se, like I think Padme and Palpatine are actually pretty good, and the new clone troopers look fantastic, Fox, you heard my complaints about, but I do like that we're getting the Red Face 2 clones here, but I just wish there was more. Literally, if they had included two more clone troopers, I'd be more inclined to recommend this set, but as it stands, it definitely feels overpriced. That being said, price aside, is the build actually any good? I mean, I had fun with it. I'm someone who typically collects Ninjago, so for 140, I like sets with a lot more going on than this, and this is very much just a troop carrier, but I think for LEGO Star Wars fans especially, there is a lot to enjoy here, and I love how much room there is to truly carry the troops. So yeah, I feel like the price on this one's a bit high, the build definitely feels small for 140, but the level of detail is great, and the build itself's pretty good, and the minifigures that you do get are fairly solid, even if only 5 minifigures for 140 is pretty lame. But those are just my thoughts, so let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!